Hello and welcome. My name is Samuel Ray, also known as Dr. Sam, and looks like Capcom just released three small videos giving us an overview on focus mode and a couple of weapons, or more like focus mode, some of the core systems, and then one of the weapons. So, since I really enjoyed Monster Hunter Rise, and that was a big part of my channel, as I was streaming over on Twitch and here on YouTube, I wanted to check out these videos, see what they got for us. So first is Focus Mode, which is the newest mechanic in this entry. It allows you to carefully aim your attacks or guards. So it almost acts like an aim down sights mode, it seems. The attacks or guards you perform in Focus Mode will be directed towards where the camera is facing. Instead of the direction you're pressing with the main movement stick. While hunting, attacking the same parts of a monster continuously may create wounds on that body part. Oh, okay. Using focus mode will highlight those wounds. Attack wounds to deal more damage than normal. Okay, so you're creating critical damage spots. Also highlight any weak points that the monster has exposed. Ooh. So it gives you intel in addition to utility. Focus strikes are special attacks that deal extra damage to wounds and weak points. Use focus mode to zero in on a monster's weakness and deal major damage. Yeah, so it's like an aim down sights, but for a third person action game rather than a shooter. Okay. Yeah, I like it. It's not something you want to do all the time because you notice that um, his movement was a lot slower during focus mode and you had to aim towards him because, well, they only attack in the direction that your reticle is, rather than the direction you press with the left stick. So it's a trade-off. And basic mechanics. So this might be stuff we already know, but two weapon states, sheathed then drawn. When your weapon is sheathed, you can move faster and use items. Yeah. Except with the sword and shield, you could use weapons while your shield is up or use weapons while your shield is out, your sword and shield are out. When your weapon is drawn, your movement is limited, but your weapon can be used to attack. Yep, making the game up to managing your states. The Sacred. The Sacred is a creature that can be mounted, providing you with a means of travel. Essentially like the dogs, which I liked the dogs in the Palamutes in Monster Hunter Rise. It can guide you automatically to what? To the quest target. Target monster for your current quest. Really? So. It, okay. So it's a lot like the scout flies in the world once you get the. You know, enough. Do enough tracking and get the scent, so to speak. Okay. While mounted, you can recover health, just like when riding the Palamutes. Sharpen your weapon. Gather yeah, useful hunting items and materials. Yep. Wow, he leaned down far to grab that. In Rise, the animation was just kind of swipe your arm out. <laughs> a little down, out and down a little bit. But man, he leaned way down with that. And you'll gain the ability to switch between a primary and second. Oh, okay. I did see stuff about that satchel on the uh, side of the sacred. So while you're mounted, you can swap weapons. So go in with two weapon loadouts. That's cool. It seems like a kind of a, a mutation of the uh, switch. Was it skill swap scroll in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, where you can swap between your different um, ability sets, your switch skills on your weapon to create like almost two different play styles in one. I actually really liked that, being able to switch between, uh, you know, switch my skills on my sword and shield so I could focus on different things at different times, depending on the circumstances. Uh, so I guess with this, you could possibly load up two great swords, for example, and have them kitted differently for different focuses. One that's maybe more of a heartbreaker and then one that's more of a like raw damage dealer or something like that, or have two entirely different weapons like a ranged weapon and a melee weapon. The Slinger. Standard equipment for any hunter. 
Oh, and this is a lot like in a uh, world, I think. Fire various types of ammo that you can gather from the environment. Oh. Arm mounts a crossbow. Like a mini crossbow. Oh, it's a utility thing. A universal utility thing. So you can take materials from the environment and then do things like create stun grenades. Or... Okay. Book slinger to gather items from a distance. Whoa. Okay. I was not expecting that. Or interact with the environment. Okay, this is very Monster Hunter World. Yep. That's straight out of world. Can you use the hook slinger while writing your sacred? Okay. Cool. So they did have some new stuff for us. That's nice. That's nice. Okay, and now we have the weapon showcase. The weapon spotlight for the great sword. Which, in my opinion, the great sword is Monster Hunter. Like, I just enjoy playing it simply because it's the most, like, pure Monster Hunter feeling gameplay, in my opinion. A weighty weapon with slower movement attacks, but each blow packs a powerful punch. And it's interesting because I'm usually more about mobility than raw strength, but in Monster Hunter, the Great Sword feels so good to play. At least in Rise, it did. And I guess in God Eater, because I did play the Great Sword in those as well. Suitable for hit and run tactics or even guarding. Highly adaptable. Yeah, it's it's very fun to play if you're good with it. Like that looks so cool. Use focus mode to target wounds and weak points. Okay, and so then he does the drag across them. Yep, there's the double overhead. Man, they it still looks beefy as ever. I really like the new focus mode stuff, honestly. That's going to be fun to play with. And then being able to have two weapons with you for hunt, thanks to the satchel on the, uh, on the sacred, that's awesome. That's going to allow so much more versatility. Instead of just swapping between skills on one weapon, you're going to be able to swap between entire weapons. That's really cool. Okay. They give us some good information. I actually really like the, the direction this is going in. It does look like they are combining elements of Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter Rise, but in, in different flavors, instead of just imitating it. Uh, I do wonder if the slinger can be used to swing on things a little bit. Give us a little bit of that wire bug feel without being as broken, right? And, and just zipping around. That would be interesting to see if they have certain environmental things that you can latch onto and swing from, for example, to aid with traversal. Because one thing Monster Hunter has lacked before um, Rise was verticality. So, but I mean, and it makes sense, though, because the series, oftentimes, they wanted to focus on, uh, you know, things to feel much more grounded. But I do like me some verticality in, in, in uh, my non-PvP games, so... Yeah, this is looking fun. Definitely going to keep up with this as they release more marketing material. So if you are looking forward to Monster Hunter Wilds, make sure you hit subscribe and like this video to help push it through the algorithm a bit more because the YouTube algorithm does not like small channels like mine. So it's only with your help that I can actually uh, grow and get this anywhere. So I appreciate any support you might want to give with them. Um, Honestly, a subscribe is the best way you can help right now. I just want to grow my channel a little bit. And then um, follow along with me in this. Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, did you ever play? Uh, <clears throat> let me know in the comments. Did you ever play Greatsword? Um, what was your first Monster Hunter? Was it World? Was it Rise? Or was it one of the older ones from Generations uh, and back? Right, Generations Ultimate and older. So let me know your thoughts, your experiences, and uh, what you're looking forward to, to seeing them do with your favorite weapon. All right, this has been Sam Ray, also known as Dr. Sam, and I will see you in the next Monster Hunter Wilds video that I release. You have a great one.